Hi, I'm Underbelly, and you suck at producing. Math rock is a genre of rock band music with ridiculously complicated time signatures. Rhythm is dubstep's even dumber cousin, designed to be as easy to headbang to as possible. Now, these genres are diametrically opposed. Why the heck would anybody try to combine them? Well, for some sick reason, I did. And I even managed to convince a record label to put out a whole EP of this shit. The EP is called Mental Kill. And to make sure something like this never happens again, I'll be doing an extremely detailed breakdown of the first song of the EP, called Matches. Let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so check it. So here I have the mix down project file for the shit song. Let's go to my not drums folder. Let's start with this cute little sign pluck I got here. Oh, so adorable. I just want to give that little plucky puck a nice warm hug. Anyways, let's see how I made this shit. I'm going to solo it out and uh, highlight all the effects uh, and turn them off by hitting zero. Now let's go to operator here. And the reason why I'm using operator is because you can draw your own harmonics to the sound. So for example, you just make sure you're on the oscillator section. And you can just add or subtract harmonics like so. And it just gives it a nice warmer timbre, something that can actually cut through the mix as opposed to some boring ass sine wave. Jesus. After that, I got this frequency shifter. And what this is doing is if I turn up the amount on the LFO, you get this crazy stereo wobbly dobbly. That's insane. So what I've done is I've automated that at the end of each phrase, you get a little stereo wobble. It just adds a bit of more texture and nuance to the sound. Next up, we got this hybrid reverb. Now let's just add a bit of roominess to it. You just gotta make sure that you turn this blend knob all the way to the left. That way you just use the convolution side of the hybrid reverb as opposed to the algorithmic side. Next up, we got the multiband to squash the shit out of it. EQ to take out the low end. And this really cool effect called Pitch Drop, which creates a cool little tape stop effect when you activate it. Oh! Okay, that's beautiful. I'm automating that at the end of each phrase as well. And that's basically how I made the sign plug. That's so nice. Now underneath all that, I have this delicious acoustic guitar. Legend has it, this is uh, Taylor Swift's uh, guitar. Uh, she uses this plug and it's called Ample Guitar M2 Lite. It's a free acoustic guitar. I use it all the time. And all I'm doing here is I'm adding a bit of grain delay to widen up the guitar. And some OTT to squash the shit out of Taylor Swift's guitar. She can never do this. I actually resampled this guitar and put it in a granulator. That's what created these little more ambient ethereal guitar plickety plicks. Intro progressing, we're starting to build up the energy. And then we got the drop. Let's hear it. Okay, now let's hear how I made that bass sound. So uh, here's what it sounds like originally. Oh, that's beautiful. Let's take all the effects off and see what kind of hoot and is going on. I'm actually playing chords on this bass sound. It's terrible. I got this F all the way up there a couple octaves because I found that if you take the, all these Fs and put them right next to the C sharp, oh, oh, oh. anyways, you put it back up. And what it does is it implies a chord in your bass. So I'm essentially implying a C sharp major chord. I'm just doing that throughout the riff, uh, the same shape for every note. Okay, that's beautiful, but uh, who cares about music theory? Nobody does. Everybody wants sweet serum. So I'm using oscillator A. I'm just using the basic shapes here. I decided to go with this little offset, cute little pinch square instead of the regular one. So that's nice. To create the pluckiness, the percussiveness of the sound, I'm using a couple different things. First off, my envelope one. I just got the sustain all the way down. Pretty fast decay. Get that plug. Uh, I'm also using, if I turn oscillator A off, I'm using this noise oscillator on one of the kick settings. It creates a nice little click at the beginning of every note there. If you take a look at envelope 2, I've actually routed that to the coarse pitch of oscillator A so that 
At the beginning of every note, the pitch goes down really fast, kind of does this like pew pew. So that's pretty sick. And finally, the last thing I, I'm doing to make it more percussive, so I'm routing envelope one to the filter cutoff. Let's create that pew 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 sound to it. So it's very nice. I'm actually automating the cutoff of the filter. If you take a look at the automation here, that's all that right there. And then if we go back to Sweet Serum, I got two effects, hyper dimension. I'm using just the dimension side to widen the sound up. Oh, it's amazing. And then finally, I'm using the filter. I'm using the all pass filter because it creates this really sick metallic dispersed sound. I don't really know how it works. By default, it sounds pretty boring. But if you start moving the cutoff around, it kind of re-pitches the sound, which is insane. And then you turn the resonance up. Oh, Jesus Louises, that's crazy. And then after that, I got this grain delay that's widening it up. Just a little bit, just a smidge. And then I'm really using this vocoder technique a lot. If you use vocoder on the modulator mode, what it kind of does is it gives sounds this sort of watery digital effect. What it's doing is it's dividing the sound into these tiny, tiny frequency bands with all these little band pass filters here. You can kind of reduce the sound into its bare components. So if I turn the gate up, it's just letting the most loud frequencies through and just throttling everything else. So it's really sick and creating this wateriness. Of course, OTT, you don't need to explain that. Bass mono to mono the low end, and then this color limiter effect, free max for live effect that I loved using, squashing the sound and adding a bit of saturation. I resampled all that and created this audio track, and I added even more effects. So I added ozone imager to widen the sound. Do that girth, that healthy girth, taking out even more low end with this EQ. And then you'll notice I got this saturator on digital clip at the end. Now I'm putting this on basically every track because see how much it jumps up with the saturator off? It's going all the way up there. And check it out with the saturator on. Holy guacamole. Peaks are basically getting shaved off like Uncle Joe's chest hair. And that's really good because it gives us way more headroom to crank the shit out of our mix, especially when we're on the mastering stage. So I'm putting digital clip saturators basically everywhere. It's fucking crazy right now. I decided to fatten up with the uh, sub bass underneath, which sounds like this. Uh, if you want to open up Sweet Serum, all it is is just the basic triangle wave. Triangle waves are a little bit more harmonics, which allows it to sort of mesh with the original sound, the main bass on top a bit better. Of course, saturating that a bit, and let's hear it all together. And then we drop. All right, next up we got these nice little church bells. Now this one's gonna blow your mind because if I take all these effects off, check it out, the original sound. It doesn't sound like a bell at all. It sounds like some Super Mario Brothers bullshit. And here's the stitch. All this is is using the sign for the foundation. The only difference is I'm using oscillator B. I got it on a sawtooth, crank the chorus up to create some upper harmonics, and I'm just turning up the level to give it that 8-bit crunch. Now the magic really comes in with the hybrid reverb because if you turn your hybrid reverb on, you make sure the dry wet's at 100% and you turn the blend all the way to the left, you're gonna get the pure convolution side of the reverb. The way convolution reverb works is that you can drag in a sample, otherwise known as an impulse response, into the reverb and it's gonna make it sound like your sound is like going through that space. So check this out, say I wanted it to go through a snare. Get some of these virtual rise snares, Are we in the club. Oh, maybe get like a, a perk sound. I don't know, like, a, uh, sure, why not? Holy guacamole. So you get some insane shit using this hybrid reverb. What I'm using is one of Eli Derp's uh, perk sounds, perk flonase is very good for your health. And you can also tweak the sound further by cranking the size up and down. Kind of changes the timbre of the sound, which is pretty insane. Anyways, I had it at 107. So that's how you basically transform any sound into anything you want, which is crazy. Of course, I'm OTTing that shit and taking out the low end, and that's what it sounds like. Okay, nice little break. Changing the time signature to 15-4, what the fuck? 
If I turn on the metronome, you can count to 15 with me and see that I'm not lying. It's actually 15, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. What the heck? Check this out. I got these beautiful vocal chops. Um, if I take these effects off, you'll hear. Uh, she's yelping like crazy, you know, she's having a great time. Like, oh, I didn't want her to simmer down a little bit. So I'm gonna add some vocoder to this. I'm doing two things. First off, I'm putting the gateway up so that only the loudest frequency bands come through. So you can kind of reduce the sound to its bare components by doing that. And then I'm also automating the range of the vocoder, which basically acts like a filter. So um, as it goes up, the sound gets brighter. So I'm automating that right here. I can hit show automation. You all can see it. Slow the gun up there. That's basically it for the vocoder. I'm going to skip to the OTT, turn that on, of course. And then I have this audio effect rack where I'm dividing the effect into two parts. We got the dry. And then we got this delay chain here. Basically, right, it's this super insane slap back delay that you can automate the time value of, which will cause the delay to pitch up and down, sort of like an old school tape deck. So go some crazy psycho stuff. Whoa, what the fuck? That's insane. So what I've done here is I've automated both the volume and the panning of this delay chain here to kind of ease the delay in and out, you know, sprinkle it in. Just a little sum sum. So there it goes up. And then of course OTT, and then I'm using this really sick plugin called Soothe, which is taking out all the resonant frequencies of the vocals, making them sound less harsh. Okay, look at that, look at that dip. Okay, now I'm adding a crazy amount of layers. Let's take a look see here and understand what's going on. Soft piano. Got LFO chords. So this is just some standard Wumpus. And serum, you know, nice little boobies right here. And next up, we got pluck chords. And this is really cool. If I take all these effects off, using the same sort of pluck technique I showed you guys earlier with operator. Um, but in this case, I'm using the arpeggiator to repeat the chords on every eighth note. I'm using it on the chord trigger setting. Oh, Jesus. And now this is a really cool effect. Check it out. You can hear that there's a ridiculous clickiness coming out of these, these plucks here. What this does is just completely takes it out of the equation. So this transient shaper called Carver is just completely neutering those clicks, making it sound beautiful. And of course I got Saturator at the end there. Wowzers, thank you. You carve up that body. All right. I got this crazy synth lead over the top. Take all these effects off. It's just a basic ass wavetable patch. The real magic comes from the Valhalla Shimmer. Oh, so beautiful. Best reverb I ever paid 50 bucks for. Sketch cassette to distort the shit out of it. OTT, EQ. And this is really cool. You can use auto pin to kind of create this fluttery tremolo effect for the rhythm kids to headbang to. And then soothe to take out some resonances here. Awesome. Sounds incredible. It's here in the mix. And here's where it really goes down. I stole the bass guitar from the band Korn. Um, this is from that same E instrument studio bass pack, but I'm adding layers and layers of distortion here. So I've got good old guitar rig on the Black Angus lead preset. Next up, I got Serum Effects, widening up that sound, adding some distortion. Sketch cassette for more distortion. M Wave Shaver for even more distortion. OTT, multiband, utility, EQ taking out that loan. Oh my gosh. Anyways, above that, I'm layering this kind of 8 bit bass, and this is actually the same serum patch that we used for the main rhythm bass earlier. That's ridiculous. Got this main sub underneath. Okay, now here comes the Dragon Force. I couldn't beat this Fire in the Flames level when I was 12, so I decided to add it into my track. Let me take off all these effects so you can see what's going on. So I basically have this up-down arpeggiator uh, on these guitar chords here. So without the arpeggiator, it sounds like this. 
I'm so boring with it. All evil and shit. I'm using the pedal audio effect from Ableton. I got it on the fuzz, turn the gain all the way up to completely smash it. Jesus Louises. I'm using this really beautiful chorus button called Acon Chorus Multiply. It sounds fucking sick. It's free. Hybrid for that roominess. And then I'm using cabinet to simulate a mic mic'd up to a speaker cabinet in the studio that I will never own. And then OTT, of course. Okay, now I got even more guitar. This is ridiculous. The most interesting thing about this is that I'm using Spectral Resonator to basically double the guitar up an octave. So I got this kind of upper synth layer coming from the guitar, and then this is the original. So if I combine them two together, it sounds like this. Okay, so now this is the big climax of the song. I'm reintroducing all the compositional elements that we used earlier. So I got the main bass coming back in. Got the good old sub. And then I'm layering the corn bass on top of that. So corn is still there, it's still a part of it. And it's just all together now. Thanks for watching. You can check out the full song in the video description as well as the rest of the Mental Kill EP coming out on Halcyon. I'm Underbelly. Have a great day.